Hey traders, Nick here looking at Stitch Fix reported after hours. Um, so it doesn't look good after hours. Uh, it was down last time I checked, so let's double check here. If I go to maybe 15 minutes, it'll show me the after hours. Boom, bam. So it looks like it's down 19%, <clears throat> but it was down more. So the low was 845, uh, 850 something. Uh, clearly, um, suboptimal situation to say the least. I looked at the, I skimmed the top line. I don't know the company inside and out. I don't look at it often. I'll update my lines live with you here. I haven't looked at them in a long time. So maybe it'll help you uh, trade it tomorrow in general too. So I looked at the report. The loss widened. I don't really worry about losses when it's a growth company it's supposed to be. There is growth there in the sales. So if you look at the sales line, they're still headed in the right direction. That's the sales line. Uh, if you want to delve into it. Uh, you pick the income statement and you look that they're growing steadily year over year. Um, they're, you know, they still have a loss. They, they teeter between loss and gains. The one thing is that if you go down to the quarterly, you can see that the cash from operations is positive. But if you take the annual, it's not. So don't know which one's true. If they're not bleeding cash to operate, that's fine. They're growing steady, uh, steadily. So what about now? How do I handle a drop this big? First of all, a drop this big, you have to respect it. There might be some margin calls, although it's a low dollar stock. I'm not sure if there is a lot of that. Um, here's my thought. So let me go back and update my lines from before. Oops. So this is about a year's worth of data. So the one statement before today's drop, which is not shown here, um, <clears throat> the bears are in control. Why is that important? Which means on rallies, I do not add longs. <laughs> I use rallies to get out of losers and to book fast profits if, if I have them. Like if somebody bought the dip after hours and tomorrow it rallies, I would exit that personally. I'm not giving anybody trading advice. When the stock is in the hands of the bears, and this one is in the hands of the bears, it's not an opinion, it's a fact. It's going from here to here, which means every rally is getting sold. Every rally gets sold. How big the rally is doesn't matter. They're all getting sold and it's selling, setting lower lows and lower highs. So the bulls are in, I mean, the bears are in complete control on the daily chart. So the important thing tomorrow and the day after, if it does rally, what do I do with the rally? If I'm long and the rally fixes half my problem, I'm out. If I have longs, I book them. If I need insurance, I buy it. I use rallies to fix my problems and to book profits, not to add to my problems and start chasing it. Okay, this is it. This is the time. It's going to change. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. You don't trust it until it changes the behavior. When? When they sim swim out of this descending trend, at what time frame? You pick. How fast are you trading? 30 minutes? Okay, so when they go out of the descending channel for 30 minutes. All right, so let me go to one day and I'll put my drawings on, turn them on, and see if I can walk you through what I saw from from last time so apparently I haven't checked on it since December and back then I said support zone the lost leg lower after hours it's right here so I was spot on with the level spot on with the level loss scenario it took a while to lose it it didn't lose it until January and then it lost it you say oh but the whole market fell do you care I drew a line and it was proper and it happens all the time I also had resistance zone um, I don't know how accurate those zones were. Let's look. So two of them, that was two spots where sellers were going to show up and they showed up on the first one. They didn't even need to go to the second one. So now when this rally comes back up into 12, <clears throat> it, they're going to find a lot of sellers. Into 14, it's going to be almost impossible to get through it without a headline. What kind of headline? I don't know. Buyout, investment, some ridiculous 80% rally on BBBY. If that happens here, take it and run, run, get out, out, out. Anyway, um, that's the statement. So there, there have been resistance. So respect the technicals. When you don't know what the hell's going on with the chart, at least lean on something that's actual facts. There's no opinions here. Here's one back in the warning from 2021. I said support zones, but also a trigger for a bearish pattern. Whoop, down it went. And then I drew the second one, down it went. Uh, prior resistance, but also a trigger. It took it. Resistance zone, it failed. Um, so we have to respect the technicals. So here are some happy technicals we had from before. Breakout, 
big trigger potential. Those were my words. Look at it. All the way up there, big trigger potential. I thought it would go to here, and I thought that was big. It went to here. Who bought it at 110? Who bought it at 110? Call me. I've got something to sell you. That is insanity. That is absolute insanity. Okay. Um, it's going to take a lifetime to get the money back from somebody who chased it up at 110. I feel bad about it. Okay, so what do I do now with the lines? The lines are meaningless. Why? It's never been lower, right? That's an all-time low. So you have to uh, bring in your method. What do I do when a stock I own or I'm long and gets broken like this? My number one rule, I don't add. I don't double down. Averaging down is a hideous idea, in my opinion, especially in an iffy stock like this one. Iffy how? it can't find the bottom. Forget the company. The stock is iffy. The stock is iffy. Wall Street hates it for now. So why should I make my problem bigger by averaging down? The difference is if I'm aver averaging in, how is that different? Let's say when I took the long, wherever it was here, I decided to take half the position. I was planning on doing 500 shares. I only did 250 or 200. If I add now, I'm not doubling down. I'm averaging into a full-size position so that would be smart but versus I had a problem and now I just doubled it for no reason that's crazy so chart wise there are no lines anymore unless you're an active trader tomorrow and using the minute charts for that I can help uh, to my eye 940 is important and of course 980 and above I don't think this gap is easy uh, unless somebody comes out in defense of it. Who? I don't know. Goldman Sachs, JPO, those guys. They can bail you out. Um, can it go lower? Absolutely, it can go lower. So how do I know? If you lose the low from overnight, else it goes. Warning on the lows from overnight on TradingView. This is TradingView. It's not always accurate. Like today and yesterday, it was dollars away from what I see on Thinkorswim, which I believe is pretty accurate. So check on a different platform. What was the, the overnight low? Uh, let me check for you actually while I have you here and I look at Thinkorswim. Uh, Thinkorswim is TD Ameritrade. Uh, so the low is 8 flat. What was it here? Look at that. You have 55 cents to play with. Uh, with Thinkorswim, I see an $8 print. Whether it actually filled there or not, I see the low there. So if I were to buy the dip in SFIX tomorrow, I could be quote brave enough to to buy it at eight. In fact, I will put the the alert right here uh, at eight twenty to start to be tempted to trade it, not invest in it. I am not an investor in Stitch Fix. I thought that Macy, Macy's should have bought them a long, long time ago, when before their stock almost went to zero. Macy's stock. Okay, so back to Stitch Fix. I feel bad for the longs, but hopefully you have not been averaging down and if you have I would stop that is just crazy talk all right nothing against the company in fact I spoke positively about the company signing out